Recently, I've been lurking the forums answering uh, various player questions, and by far the most common question I've helped with in the past few days, uh, ever since the live stream, is who should I choose with the six star selector ticket? In this video, I will provide you with all the information you need to make the best decision. It isn't as simple as ranking all operators by power and picking the strongest that you are missing. You need to consider power, availability, and various schedules because you might find that there's a character you really want on this ticket and there might be a very easy way to get them somewhere else therefore you can use the ticket to get a different character instead before we even get into the best operators to pick from this ticket first you need to consider is it even worth buying the ticket now i'm not going to encourage you to spend money uh, this isn't a sponsored segment or anything but say you do have a little to spend is this the best value for your credits yes Simply put, the six star ticket is the best value purchase in Arknights, even better than the much lauded and rightfully so monthly card pack. The $30 purchase price for the six star ticket selector, price will vary based on your location, is equal to buying six monthly cards. The monthly card gives you more pulls than the average needed to get a six star, but that can't match the ticket's ability to give you a six star of choice. And on top of that, there's also 10 pull ticket. So let's take a look at which operators are available for selection from this ticket. First up, no limited operators. Uh, so far, there have never been any limited operators available on any of these tickets. Uh, that might change in future when there's an abundance of limited operators and they might have a limited operator selector ticket. But for the moment, no limited operators whatsoever. Also, for standard operators, the rule is the operator has to be over six months old. So that means no Mudrock, no Mountain, no Archetto, no Saga, and no Passenger, and obviously uh, no Calcet on the current banner. So this leaves us with everyone from release up to Blemishine. Now, before we take anything else into consideration, let's just rank them into rough groups of power so you can see where the units will sit. So right at the top, strongest is Serta. By herself, she's simply better than the rest of the units available. In the top tier bracket, we have Thorns, Aya, Silver Ash, Blaze, Exia, Suzerun, and Saria. These top tier units are ones that will make a massive difference to your teams. Not to say that the others... Oh, and I forgot to include Backpipe. It's not to say that these other units won't be able to make a huge difference. This, we're just talking in general terms here. This is if you're looking at various types of content and you want units that are going to have a lot of use in a variety of, of places. If we had to do a bit of a ranking within a ranking, the four on the left of Thorns, Aya, Silver Ash, and Saria are a little bit better than the ones on the right. But you really can't go wrong with any of these characters. Then in the great category, so these are ones where generally one of the top tier units for the most part will be better, but these are also fantastic units and are definitely worth using and include some of my favorites. So we've got Ifrit, Nightingale, Heliger, Rosa, Weedy, Unectes, Schwartz, Kyobi, Phantom, Oshiguma. It's a very stacked tier over here because there's just a, a lot of great units. Angelina, Magellan, Shining, Ark, and Blemishine. And then down in the weakest tier, unfortunately, these are the operators where I don't think it's even worth buying the ticket for these units, even if they're the only ones that uh, you still don't have, un unless you particularly love these characters. So we've got Skadi, Mastima, Siege, and Chen. Now, the next thing we need to consider is the availability of these units. So let's start with Serta, for instance. Serta is by far the best unit that you can select from here. However, she's also incredibly popular and very easy to find on your friends list. So if you're someone who doesn't particularly want to have Serta for whatever reason, say, I don't know, she's not your favorite unit or you want to have a bit more of a challenge so you don't feel that you're going to need Serta, but on the occasion that you do want her, you can always rely on your friends list to, to borrow her, then you can think of it that way and then go for someone else instead. But there's also other ways to think about the availability. So for instance, the most reliable way to get a particular six star is to wait for it to come into the gold certificate shop. 
Now the gold certificate shop, uh, the latest unit soon to be available is Ark, uh, who is about to enter the store after the current banner, which features Silver Ash. In fact, that brings you to a very good point. Because Silver Ash right now is in the certificate store, even though he's a top tier unit, I rank him very low for choices on this uh, six star selector ticket because you can just spend 180 gold certificates to get him anywhere and then just pick someone else. So he drops down. Ark as well, even if you really like him, you can just wait for him to come into the gold certificate store. Thinking of units that are soon to be available or are due to be available in the certificate store, I should say, there's no guarantee and there's no easy way to predict this, but you can generally get a rough idea of who is due. Bit of a long explanation, but the short version is you, you can get an idea based on how long it's been since the character has appeared in the store, how many times the character has appeared in the store, and when the character was released. These units are due to appear in the store. Sorry, they are overdue to appear in the store or they're uh, set to come up very soon. So for instance, Scardi hasn't been in the store for a very long time. They might want to hold her back because they don't want to put her next to Scardi Alter and they might hold it until she gets a rerun of her summer skin in a few months time. Shining is well overdue. Magellan is also well overdue. And this is where we get to another big influence on certificate store candidates, and that is skins. When a character has a skin, whether it's a rerun or a new skin, there will generally be an emphasis on them getting onto a banner. Now, it's not always onto a banner as the gold certificate candidate. Sometimes it will be on the banner, but as the other six star, uh, as happened recently with Hoshiguma. She was on a standard headhunting banner. However, she wasn't available in the gold certificate store, even though she is very, very, very much overdue for appearing in the gold certificate store. Similarly, Angelina, she has been overdue for a very long time now. However, she also has, has the most appearances in the store. So even though it's been a while, she's probably not going to appear for quite some time. The most likely appearance for Angelina next is at the Gavial event rerun when she gets her summer skin. Aya also has a summer skin at that time, and Aya hasn't been in the store as many times as Angelina. However, Aya has been in the store more recently than Angelina. So as you can see, there's, there's no way to be certain. It could be a 50-50 between the two. It could be that Aya is on one banner and then the very next banner it's Angelina, or, or the other way around. It could be they both appear in the same banner. One is the gold certificate selector, and the other is the non-gold certificate six star. Saria? is due to appear in the store because she has been underrepresented in terms of number of appearances within the gold certificate store. However, she is amongst the more recent of appearances amongst these units. And Kyobi is here because she is the next new member to the gold certificate store due within about four to six weeks. Uh, it's roughly four weeks between new entrants to the gold certificate store. And following her in about two months will be Bagpipe. So that's something to consider. Bagpipe is top tier unit, but if you really want her and you can hold off for a couple of months, you could just buy her with the gold certificates. Another factor to consider is the schedule of upcoming banners, particularly solo banners, where it's much easier to get that particular character that you want, where you may perhaps get your most wanted character and therefore you can choose someone else with your ticket. So for a look at the upcoming banners, now this is no guarantee, we are not 100% certain that we're going to get the exact same banners, but all indications so far, all patterns have pointed towards us getting the same banners. Perhaps not in the same order, but most likely so. Right now, these dates, by the way, are the Chinese dates. So just use them for reference in terms of distance between banners rather than actual release for us. Right now, we are about to start the Undertides banner. And then following that with the next contingency contract operation is the Joint Operations 4 banner. Now this is a very special kind of banner because it only has four focus six stars, but those are the only six stars that you can get on this banner. Uh, if you need all four of those characters, this is the best time to try and get at least one of them because you're guaranteed to get something that you like. The more of those characters you have, the less valuable this banner is. So in my case, for instance, I have Weedy and Suzerun and I really want Thorns. But because it's a 50-50 of getting somebody I've already got and only a 25% chance of getting the character I really want, for me, 
it's not worth the risk, I'm not going to pull for thorns on this banner. Then you've obviously got to consider new release units. So let's say you do want to pull one of the, the new characters that's coming up. Even if, say, you do want to go for Suzerain, you know that you can't afford to pull on the Suzerain banner because you want to go for one of the new characters. Even though you know Suzerain has an opportunity, you might set, tell yourself, doesn't matter there's a banner coming up, I can't afford to spend any resources on that. I'm just going to pick Suzerain with the six star selector ticket. That way I can ignore her banner. That's another way of looking at it. If you do want to consider pulling on particular banners, the notable solo banners that are upcoming is Suzerain. Then about a month or so later, you can expect to get Unectes with the Gavial event rerun. And then after the summer holiday, there is a Thorns rerun. However, that is a long way off. So this is where you have to ask, how much patience do you have? If you really want Thorns, like I do, are you willing to wait? And keep in mind, there's no guarantee you're gonna get that character on the banner. Are you willing to risk it? Are you okay with perhaps picking a different unit with your ticket and then rolling for thorns? And then if you don't get him, then maybe you buy him with the next ticket. Or do you intend to pull on the summer banner as well, which means you're not gonna have any resources left to pull on the thorns banner. If you really want to optimize this, just think a little bit about where you're going to put your resources. And finally, another thing to keep in mind is the availability of units through the recruitment feature. So I'm, I'm a bit hesitant to weigh up whether it's worth considering recruitment at all because A, the odds of getting a top operator tag is very low. You could be like me and go for months and months and months of not seeing it. Or you could be like my alt account and see it for three weeks in a row. You could be very lucky or you could be very unlucky if you are Again, willing to be a bit patient and you think, well, over the next three months, I feel, you know, the odds are I'm going to get a top operator and I really do want to get one of the, the healers, the six star healers. But, you know, if I get a top operator tag, then, you know, maybe top operator tag plus healing, then maybe I can get one of them or top operator tag plus medic, you know, it's not that rare. Maybe I can get one of them that way, so I won't pick them with a six star selector ticket. Maybe I'll go for Blemishine instead because I can't recruit her. Another thing to consider is certain characters either aren't available on recruitment yet or Hypergriff just outright has not added them to recruitment, even though the unit is quite old, such as uh, Aya and Angelina. A very important thing to also keep in mind of who you want to select is what does your team need? Say, for example, you have Mudrock and Mountain already in your team. Even though Blaze is a fantastic unit, you don't really need to pick Blaze because you've already got two units that can not do exactly what she does, but roughly do what she does in many ways. You know, you can make do, even in situations where Blaze might be a little bit better at doing that particular role. And instead you might wanna go for someone like, like someone like Thorns because you're really lacking in arts damage and maybe Surtur's your only arts damage and you need some kind of anti-air arts damage with consistent DPS, but then you might think, oh, well, actually he's a bit of a lane holder as well. And I've got Mudrock who's also a lane holder. So I might go for Aya instead, but Aya might get that rerun in the gold search shop with her skin. So maybe, uh, maybe actually instead I'll go for Suzu, but I can try for Suzu on the banner. That's the, that's the real conundrum about who to pick. It's a, it's a very generous, so to speak, pack that you can buy, but it also gives a bit of that paralysis of choice. And then lastly, of course, if you like a, a particular character, say you absolutely love Alter Scardi and you really want regular Scardi as well, don't let anyone stop you from just picking Scardi if that's your favorite character and you have the money to spend. So with all that said, I'm gonna try and wrap it up in a quick summary of order of who to pick. If you do not have Surtur and your team comp in general needs a big killer unit, you can't go wrong with Surtur. If, if in doubt, pick Surtur. Just as strategy in most maps is, if in doubt, deploy Surtur. However, if you do have like, say, Thorns, Aya, and Silver Ash already, then you probably don't need Surtur as much. So you might wanna go for, you know, someone like Saria, who is also an amazing unit and can support your team in a different way. Second, I would go for Thorns because he is an amazing unit as well. And due to his release date, he is a very long way off from appearing in the gold certificate store. And even though he has this upcoming banner after the summer event, it's just too far away, in my opinion, to wait. And if you do intend to roll on anything in between now and then, you are unlikely to have enough resources to roll on that banner as well. So for me, it's not worth the risk waiting. 
After him, I strongly suggest Aya. She is down in priority on the others because she may get an appearance in the gold certificate store because of her upcoming skin. After her, I would pick Saria. Saria is an extremely powerful unit and one of the best. Support is not exactly the right term in, in the way that this game uses it, but I think of healers as, as supporter units. She is an amazing supporter unit in that sense. However, she comes with two caveats. One, she is due for the certificate store sometime soon-ish, and she is available from recruitment. So if you are fortunate enough to get top operator tag and say defender plus healing, you might be able to get her, but she is a phenomenal unit. Blaze is a hard carry unit in many events and many story stages, as well as annihilation stages. And she just very recently appeared on the certificate store and she's not available from recruitment and there's no upcoming banner with her. So if you really want Blaze and you missed out on her recent banner, she is another fantastic pick. After that, if you need a sniper, there's Exia. Now Exia is similar to Saria, available from recruitment and is not that far off from an appearance in the certificate store. Now, of course, if you've got a limited number of gold certificates as well, that's another thing to consider. Then there's Suzu. Now Suzu is getting that solo upcoming banner and she's also on the contingency contract banner. So this is my recommendation for Suzu is with the caveat in mind that you do not intend to roll on these banners. Now, what you can always do is you can hold onto the ticket. The ticket, I believe, has 60 day expiry. You can hold onto the ticket, see if you get her on either of these banners. If you have the patience, if you don't want to jump the gun and immediately select the character that you want, I definitely think it's a good idea to hold on to it, see what you get. Bagpipe, I only recommend picking her for the impatient people. After Kyobi, she is due next in the new character added to the gold certificate store. If you're willing to hold off for about two months and guarantee to get her, you can get her that way. Silver Ash, top tier unit. He's available right now in the gold certificate store. He's a very powerful carry unit, but he's also very, very, very readily available right now. Now within the great tier, in general, over here, just pick whoever it is that you feel that you need the most for your roster. However, strong recommendations go towards Blemishine because she is the most recent unit available in this six star selector ticket, which means she's the furthest off from ever getting added to the gold certificate store and her rerun banner isn't for quite some time. So if you really want Blemishine and she's a fantastic unit, then she's a very good choice if you don't really need any of these top tier or certa units. Bit of a low priority on Magellan. She is very likely to be due for a gold certificate entry. Ark, obviously, low prior. He's coming up in two or so weeks. And then Kyobi is going to be the next new operator as well after that. Joint operation banner, Keep uh, remember, there's Nightingale and Weedy are part of that banner. So if you intend to roll on that banner at all, perhaps roll for until the first six star, and then whoever you get, that's it, you stop. Hold on to your ticket, see who you get. Unectes, so Unectes is Going to have a solo banner coming up very soon. A better unit to pick, not in terms of how the unit is used, but in terms of availability and schedule, is either you pick Rosa or you pick Blemishine because they are, again, very new units, relatively speaking, to the roster available, and they are some ways off from having increased availability. Everyone else is generally quite readily available or is due for a reappearance in the certificate shop quite soon. Quick mention of Phantom, he was recently in his solo banner rerun, then he's quite likely to be a long way off from making it to your roster without some very good luck. So if you do really like him, he's also worth picking from this. And then from the weakest, I'll be honest, if you're picking one of the weakest characters, just pick whichever one you like. Siege is probably the best of these units. Also keep in mind, all four of these weakest units are available in recruitment as well. Now, of course, for the real pro gamer move, what you do is you buy the ticket and you let it expire just to send a message.